was engineering so i got back to pc again and uh, there for a longer time now uh, at the job i kept on looking for a problem or rather a problem kept on uh, pinching me and uh, it just went on for years and finally i decided no it, it's not working here and it's not uh, you know i'm not satisfied being in this place or being here so i just uh, quit at a time when uh, my son was 2 years old and uh, it's the the time where you most need the mothers to be home and the whole family will ask you to you know be home you have to be there you have to look after him you can't quit the job at this time and get into something different but uh, i thought that would give me more space and uh, more challenge to something uh, which i want to take care of it my child as well as my uh, you know entrepreneur journey uh, or the concept of problem that i had to further look down upon it uh, look into it so uh, uh, after that we uh, i had i had a lot of challenges because when i started i didn't know what to do with the problem and if you look at a place uh where you have just dropped out of job and come to entrepreneurship with no experience with no understanding with uh, not knowing what to do next it's little difficult to find out the ecosystem uh in 2017 startup co policies were just launched and uh, i i registered without knowing what it was and how it was and goa was not ever for startup till 2017 so uh, we just started with Enrolled. I didn't know what to do next. I had a lot of things, uh, you know, that can be done there. You could do this, you could do that, but there was nothing that we could look for. So initially, there was only one uh, incubator that was Siba in Delhi, which I knew, and Somebody turned off the mic for me. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am, we can. Uh, there was a little bit of problem with your Wi-Fi, I, I guess. Think I got disconnected. Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes, you are perfectly audible now. Okay. Uh, just give me a second. Okay. Uh, can someone talk? I I don't know if I am audible. I mean, I can hear you or not. Yes, ma'am. You are audible now. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So, uh, yeah. So, considering uh, that you know, uh, I didn't know what to do, what to do with the policies also that were listed, how to apply for them, and everything, we just kept it there. And I went on working with the product and the problem, and said, let's look at when it comes. Uh, you know, when I have the whole validation, I have. proof of concept and i'll go ahead and those terms uh, in those times nobody even knew what was a uh, proof of concept what is uh, validation or what is minimum viable product so these are terms which nobody had heard in ecosystem around you in fact there was no ecosystem it was just that startup had become a buzzword and everybody was just using startup the terms that were used within startup so very difficult to know at that stage so we went ahead and uh, it was just me uh, handling the whole scenario i took a few kids and i started uh, teaching them i found it exciting because they were more uh, enthusiastic about understanding something which they would learn at a stage where they become teenagers and uh, they were learning it right in the beginning at the start uh, when they were just in school so it excited them it excited me as well we went ahead it worked out uh, A lot of kids of uh, those times who were coming to uh, learn have also excelled and have got different prizes now. Prizes now with their uh, coding uh, factors and all. So eventually, I realized that it's not about just learning for them. It's about making it fun and making it, you know, uh, the play way. So that's where I decided, no, I can't go back to a job. And not that I didn't think of, you know, going back to a job because it was much easier. 
you had your pockets filled you have your bank accounts uh, you know there with all that money and uh, not that i wasn't earning well it it was and to give up on a job where uh, you know i was uh, happy about could spend for myself spend for anybody could still have balance in your account was really relaxing to the times when you come to be an entrepreneur and you just see your balance is decreasing decreasing sometime it just goes to zero and you don't know how to fill it back so it it does uh, take a lot of strength to stay at that position and uh, stay at that still reach that point and say no i'm going to go on so uh, we did that uh, rather i did that and i went ahead eventually i looked for a partner and uh, so uh, yeah i looked for a partner and i tried to think uh, you know it would be easier maybe i spending something and she also spending something so we started both of us didn't know why we wanted to get uh, into the partnership and uh, start this thing but we only knew that there was a problem and we had to solve the problem we didn't know how to manage uh, the rest of the scenario the ecosystem slowly there were more incubators which came into picture like fire and don bosco uh, the uh, government started an incubator called edc uh, edc also started a lot of schemes and grants but we did not go for any of them we just looked at the cheapest cs that could help us form a company and we looked at the cheapest ca who could advise us well on understanding the accounts part and uh, somebody who would not charge us a bomb at that time and uh, we formed a company we stayed there and sometime we, then there was covid and uh, we didn't know what to do next because we knew what to do with the problem we knew what to do as a product we knew what to do as a company but we didn't know what to do next now that covid has come and everything was shut down we were focused on schools we talked to so many schools and they were all ready and uh, game and to uh, uh, use our uh, services at that time we didn't have a product we had a service and they were all happy to uh, you know uh, have us on board and start the whole thing but eventually because of covid it just shut down totally we didn't know where to go and uh, slowly slowly uh, my partner realized that it's not possible for her to stay in this case in this scenario and she said sorry i, I want to drop so at that stage uh, scrt's director said uh, could you help us since you are not doing anything right now with your development and this is what a uh, problem that we are facing a lot of children don't have uh, devices and they can't reach get an access to the tv uh, to their uh, lessons that we are floating on the mobiles so we did a quick survey and we found out that a lot of parents had to make a choice whether of the two children which one is important to give the mobile to or the device to and the infrastructure was extremely weak it was not possible for people to afford another device a digital device for their kids or for each one of them and the internet because they were also off their jobs or off their uh, services and you know different things that they were also facing less salaries half salaries no salaries so uh, we said okay and we looked up and found out a company who could uh, help us with the csr funds and we uh, we told them we'll do the tv lessons for you record it with their own teachers and we put up the lessons on the tv so this was not actually the part that we wanted to do as our company but it was something that as a problem solver or as entrepreneurs we had to go on we didn't know whether that would become the whole product for us but eventually i realized that's not the product that we want to develop there were too many players in it and uh, there was a lot of things uh, which were there which would give you money but it was not scalable and it was not something which you would build an ipo from so uh, we dropped it eventually after the product my partner said uh, sorry i won't be able to go ahead and at that moment it is extremely difficult to understand what you're going to do next because after no where from no where you found a person who would help you who would be there with you who would tell you that it's okay if something is wrong let's move ahead and see what happens next and suddenly you're back to square one where you were all alone so uh, again the finance and funding for a project started uh, again from what we had earned what we had saved what we had uh, made i had to borrow a little bit from my husband and 
uh, of course on loans and uh, because nobody trusts you with the money that you take for your business and they will say i don't know what you'll do with that you will all uh, put them into losses maybe you will not recover it so it's like it's okay just give it to me right now let let me put it into losses for now otherwise i wouldn't know what's the profits like so uh, you need those family and friends it's not just one or two entrepreneurs who do that they do, a lot of them start first that's your basic funding and also investors uh, say that you know if you don't know how to use your own money or if you don't know how to count on your family and friends money you haven't taken that risk with them how would you take the risk with ours so that's one thing i think we had that uh, question uh, sorted for us because and we uh, frankly didn't know that that would be the question from the investors but yes we did that uh, so basically uh, if we realized that uh, there are a lot of ways in which you can get funding there are a lot of ways in which uh, startups is supported now a lot of uh, even startup india has launched with seed funds and they are easily accessible uh, provided you have a viable product and you have a proof of concept or a workable idea so if you have all these things and then it's it's really easy to get angel investors and fundings from people so um, right now the scenarios are different like i said it's it's up to you what you want to do what's there in your head and how much you want to uh, you know uh, survive battle or you know, just give up, give up on it so you have to look for options they keep changing and startup community or the startup ecosystem is improving a lot more than what we started as uh, also we joined with incubator at uh, aic jam so next thing what we did is we joined every possible incubator that we had and uh, uh, try to take all the mentoring each incubator gives you a different way of mentoring each incubator tells you a different story uh, tells you a different to connect gives you a different network network uh, and it helps all of it helps so even if you are confused with one option you talk to three incubators they will still give you uh, different answers but one of them uh, will be the right one it's not that they all will be wrong but they will all point you with your strengths and uh, weaknesses and then you have to make a choice from there and it makes it lot easier for you to understand what kind of funds you want where do you want to spend them and uh, how are you going to grow from that space or whether you will still need more funds from somewhere else so these are some questions about fundings that we had and we answered so eventually i uh, made three more two more partners sorry three more partners and one of them is a silent partner so we three of us are working right now and uh, full time and uh, one of our partners is uh, silent and is only there during whenever there is a uh, decision making necessary or something uh the difficulties that we faced of course right from the start since we didn't have an ecosystem growing at that stage and now there a lot of networking happened uh, in fact thanks to covid because of covid we got through a lot of virtual setups through different cities uh, met and saw different uh, network sessions which happened with different startup ecosystem in different cities and that gave us an exposure to a lot of things which probably uh, being here we wouldn't have gone out to find out what's happening in the other cities unless we were thrown down to that situation so um you had to find your right partner and it's not that you will just uh, you know push it on the notice board and say hey i'm looking for a partner and you'll get a right one even if you do that you post on the notice board and say you want a partner there'll be hundreds of people who will walk in with the same enthusiasm but the point is that enthusiasm which they start with does it remain down the line do they still remain same strong have inputs to give you do they have a uh, you know that uh, courage to, or do they have the ability to risk just like the way you did so you also have to be uh, of the same end when you have to have somebody of the same uh, mentality mindset stability maybe different weaknesses but uh, same uh, i would say something which is more uh, sinking with what your behavior is so uh um, it's just like how you would find a marriage partner for you a spouse for you it's it's exactly the same thing just that you talk business here so uh when you get the right partners and you know that you have uh, reached here the next problem is 
you can't do it all alone and it's not that you can't uh, it's it's not that i wouldn't be able, uh, be building it all alone you would have but as and when your company grows there's so much to look into there's so much to look around that one person is not enough right now even three people are not enough so eventually we had to look for employees and it's always uh, something that you know startups start uh, feel that right now let's not invest into right now not let's not do this let's do what is here let's all of us work towards it which is what even incubators will tell you that not to invest so much into everything just wait just try and do it yourself unless you have extremely necessary that you have to spend and you have to get that thing done so we waited till that point and then it was too much for us to look after everything so then we knew okay now is the right time that we need to hire employees now finding right talent is also difficult again thanks to covid we were able to get people who could virtually work and uh, we tested a lot of people we even put them on internship though they were employees before but we asked them look we are not in that city you, you it's not that you're coming in uh, our office and working and i can see you what you're doing you are at a different place and there will be some people who say no no this is not possible for me but finally you have to run your company you should know what you need from them so if if you find the people who say no no you should also say no no i can't do that and just stick to something which will say yes yes i want this as well and uh, we got a few and quite a few employees who gave us a lot of insights who gave us a lot of uh, experiences from uh, their uh, ways of working or their past companies helped us a lot to grow and gave us a lot of other perspectives and eventually managing now managing is not just the staff managing or your admin staff managing or your time management it's whole lot of thing that your entire startup is based on everything is management your goals your ideas you have to make sure your vision mission is matching you still uh, are looking out for the market the market changes drastically with pandemics uh, endemics coming there'll be different scenarios they'll grow fall uh, pricings of uh, raw materials will increase drop everything your business plans will change your business partners will change but everything is a major challenge is your management over here so it's not not that you have done an mba in finance and you'll just be managing finance so you do, you're doing an mba in uh, you know, say hr and you're going to manage employees very well no it doesn't work that way when it comes to startup it's everything and you uh, end up managing micro level and it has to be that way but at some point you have to decide what are the things that you're going to micro manage and what are the things that you're going to give up uh give up as in let let them manage on their own uh next thing is the competitors so if you don't have a competitor i think you are in the wrong business if you find that you have a hell lot of competitors there you are in the right field but just that you have to make sure that you're not doing it because somebody else is doing it being having competitors one thing gives you a market validation that yes the problem that you're solving is a problem for everybody else and you will see your competitors growing very fast so that tells you that there are huge number of uh, uh, customers out there and you will you will the from the pool of customers one mug is enough for us so yes that works but that is not on uh, the basis that you should start your uh, Uh, entrepreneurship journey or your startup should be based on it's not that the market is of 2 cr 4 cr 400 cr 500 cr and 1% of that market is enough for me to survive and run no that's not where you start from maybe it's enough for you to survive and start but are you scaling from there from that if the market is 400 cr and 1% of that is enough for you right now will you be able to grow and scale and reach up to even 100 uh, even uh, you know 100 cr of that market or even 10% of that uh, market so if that is happening then you know that you are scaling you can never be enough on customers you will always have something or the other changing your customer base may change uh, your product doesn't remain the same so like i said uh, we were in the service before and we pivoted to a product uh, thanks to pandemics again 
so not that pandemics is you know something that comes in your way should never be a reason for you to stop and not look at something and say that no i'm not going to do this or it's end of it these are the challenges that you need to overcome and you have you should be able to look through those and see still see a path to reach somewhere that's one thing so now when you have a competitor the best part is before you jump into the sea you have to know you have to test the waters right you have to see whether there are currents there are no currents or waves what is the water like salty sweet stable what what are the gears that you have or what is the ability of swimming that you have depending on that you jump in the water you just don't jump uh, because you know swimming you don't just don't jump in a well <coughs> it's difficult to swim in a well so it's uh, you have to identify your competitors make a list of them find out what they have what they uh, help you do or what are the problem that they are solving how much or what percentage are you doing or what percentage are you different from them so these are some things which you need put your competitors a ranking which is the first one which is the second one that will help you uh, understanding which is the strongest one which what who is doing something exactly same as you if you are doing something exactly same as them then you won't survive as a startup so you have to move on thinking differently and find another minimum viable product which will be accepted in the market uh understand the competitors traffic there are tier 2 tier 1 tier 3 tier 4 cities which cities they are based in if it's if it's uh, if it's cities or if it's the uh, income level bracket or if it's uh, the geographical way or whatever it is you have to find out and see what is their best placement and you have to figure out what is your best placement for your product and you have a benchmarking to pass by those competitors and say yes i am doing this and i will pass by this competitor and doesn't affect me so competitors are healthy if you don't have competitors you won't be growing you will be more relaxed and sitting and saying it's okay it's like that uh, hey, uh, hair and tortoise story the hair knew that the tortoise would be slowest and he just relaxed and waited and said it's okay he won't reach so far but go to see fell asleep and you know the story so that's exactly what happens with the entrepreneurs also you should have your competitors and constant uh, watch on your competitors where they're growing how they're growing what different segments they are growing into why they're growing into those segments so these are some things which will keep a healthy competition and keep you going so when we started we have these many competitors to face so everybody in different segments everybody doing something else everybody doing everything else the internet these are just asians uh, the and there are internationals also you have to see how many of them are still doing some things what they plan to do how many of them are still in the market running at the same pace doing something what they uh, vouch for so these are lot of things which are you know there and also you will find a lot of small uh, companies also which are not even listed here or not even listed in the startups they are around you and they are in the same place that you are staying the city that you are uh, staying the uh, area or location that you are there and they are doing uh, excellent there but they don't have a scalability they are just a business there and they are doing excellent they, they can also kill you for what you are doing for a start okay so you have to understand every damn competitor whether they are listed non listed in any case you have a competitor you have to look for it and there is no startup which says we don't have a competitor i've heard this a lot of times during our pitching sessions and a lot of uh, startups say we don't have competitor right now it's never the case if you don't have a competitor you haven't looked at your market properly you haven't uh, done a good research for yourself or even your product scalability so coming to scalability it's about uh, not just you know being like i said it's not if you can't don't know how to grow from that 1% of the market to 10% of the market you don't know where you are going to reach you can't be satisfied with just that 1% of the market you may even have to change your product your uh, categories your sector your segment in the same uh, you know sub sector in the same uh, larger segment but if you can't do that you will die a slow death and eventually you will 
uh, reach a point of saturation and then you will drop it's like a bell curve every product will have a peak point and at at a point it will start dropping after the saturation every startup does that and that's the reason why you see uh, companies starting with different products they starting with either services getting into different fields so that's because they've reached a saturation level there and then the company self runs you don't have to do anything more beyond it it will run for itself it will generate the revenue that you want but as a company if you want to grow you have to scale because that what you're saying that it is going to run run for a while there's somebody else who will step in and say hey i found another solution to this where you are running i can just change the market and shake the whole thing from there on if you think that's your retirement point sell your company to somebody else and let them take it over but if you can't uh, if you think that that's not your retirement point you have to constantly look for how you will go, grow from there on you have to keep uh, understanding the customer so best person to understand your scalability is your customer your customers are never your enemies specifically the ones who criticize you have a lot of them at the start who will criticize you if you know people who would always talk bad about you and criticize you just throw the product in front of them and ask them what you think about this and let them criticize that's the best thing that you can do you even if you know that some people would never understand you they are the right ones to make you feel that what are you missing in your product just take it there for criticism at the start and that will tell you that what potential your product has it's not just one or two people you even uh, investors uh, have told us that you are you are not investable for us uh, we reached up uh, we reached uh, aicgim and uh, the mentors they told us you can't be investable it it was really heartbreaking to see that we have reached such a point where we have a excellent product in our hand and they tell us that you know you're not investable then we realize a lot of things that you need to take care of there's a road map you need to understand you need to understand the type of skills you have how many you have uh, the strength that you have built in your product and your company all these things matter to make you an investable uh, startup so uh, uh, the same way we reached at a point where we got the seed fund and we were eligible for the seed fund that we were like oh now that's great we can at least hire people with the seed fund but that's not it your seed funds get exhausted so quickly that uh, you know you won't even know that you had planned a seed fund to be there for next 6 months and in the next 2 months you realize that i'm uh, going bankrupt after this and i have nothing to do so the moment you have a seed fund you have to have a plan to when your next funds are going to be you have to have a plan of when your next employee is going to be whether your employee that you have hired is happy not happy they have problems they don't have problems what is it that is troubling them is it your product is it your idea it could be anything so initial stages a brainstorming at every session is extremely important the moment you or your founders your co-founders just lose the focus on fo- uh, looking up at that business canvas model that's the end of your story because none of the business uh, canvas models are going to be steady and remain the same forever or throughout your journey it will keep changing weekly uh, monthly quarterly annually it will change if it's not changing you're doing something wrong you have to look back on it so that's with the scalability yes so uh, our startup journey has been bitter sweet uh, tingy tangy everything uh spicy it and it has to be that way and uh, we haven't uh, started making revenues yet with our product we are still a pre revenue company and that's nothing wrong to be in uh, your pre revenue says that you are still uh, looking at more perspectives so the product becomes stronger um sometimes you you get delayed with a lot of uh, vendors that you need to look at you may think accessibility of your vendors is easy like you you know sometimes it's people will tell you that it's easy or you can go to your vendor all the time and have a look at it not necessary you can also have a vendor where you can go and trust and see and say that you know that vendor will do everything in your absence and will send you the best product you have to go verify everything there once come back it it really works but you can't leave it completely on them because finally they are vendors and you have your company you have to go on you have to uh, reach out you have to talk you have to meet people you have to talk to people 
not just for funding but for everything else even for a change in your product to your customers you uh, uh, everything else that you need that's the reason companies ask you for feedback and the worst feedbacks are taken into consideration for improvements and that's what you should do yeah so um, i'll end my side my talk uh, at this point and i would like to hear interactions uh, it would be more uh, helpful to you if you have questions from your side on your plans and where you want to reach probably uh, i could give you some uh, insights of the ecosystem because that's what is missing for everybody right now and uh, it's not so strong here, right now here but it's definitely building up and we have got all the help you have to keep knocking the doors like i said to know the growth of the ecosystem uh, actually the ecosystem is uh, growing as at the same pace as we are growing okay so thank you for this session and for patiently listening to me let i'm up for questions from your side you can unmute yourselves or post them in the chat whatever is comfortable any questions that you have Good morning ma'am I have a question was it a difficult decision to start up your own business uh like i said since jobs are very comfortable and specifically when you think of a startup or any uh, jumping into your own venture you'll always see that the pocket has a hole and it will keep on you know just going out from there and at a point you will realize i was better off making money when i was in a job but is that satisfying is that what is that you want to do if it is then you should definitely go to a job back but the point is are you satisfied enough on solving the problem that you looked at are you uh, satisfied that the problem which you thought of is not a problem anymore if you still it, it think that it has to go on you have to understand that you are needed and that you have a solution and that you can solve it better than anyone else that itself will answer you whether you should be in a venture or you should be in a job it's the passion that talks to you in the end yes thank you so much ma'am yeah uh well i don't think we have any other questions from our students i would like to thank you for enlightening us with your knowledge and experience on entrepreneurship I would also like to appreciate the time you've taken to show us your presentation to help us understand this topic much better. Um, I now request uh, Muskan to propose the word of thanks. Today, I take this opportunity to put all my gratitude in the form of words on behalf of Goa Business School and all the students. I would like to thank our guest Ms. Swarna Naik for taking her precious time out and consenting to enlighten us on her journey as an entrepreneur. I extend my sincere thanks to the professors for their enormous cooperation in the organization of this session. Last but not the least, I thank all the students for being present and showing their interest in the program. Thank you everyone. Have a nice day. Yes, thank you so much for having me on this session, and I hope it has uh, really helped you. Uh, if you have any uh, thing that you want to know further, you can always reach me out on the email ID is here right on your screen. You can shoot me a mail any time you want. So thank you so much, uh, Lindsay, for connecting and for this session as well, and all the audience for being patiently there and listening to me throughout. Thank you, ma'am. We thank you for your time. Yes, thank, thank you, you ma'am.